Hi everyone, it's Marianne and welcome to Marisa's Life. In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you my favorite string of plants and how I care for and propagate them. So the very first one is the string of pearls and this was very trendy last year. I remember when I first started my plant journey last year, this was one of the plants that was very much sought after, but it was very difficult to find. And if you find them, they can get quite expensive. But right now, these are a little bit more common and a lot easier to find and a lot cheaper to find as well. I did get mine at a farmer's market for about $4, which was quite a steal back then. Cause like I said, this was very hard to find and it came in a four inch pot and, and it wasn't very filled out yet. So I had to do some propagating to make it a lot fuller. But my string of pearls suffered root rot over the winter. And I think it's because I had it in a pot that is much larger than it's supposed to be. I upgraded it too quick to a six inch pot because I was excited to get my string of pearls bigger, but it wasn't really the right one for it because the water wasn't draining out fast enough. And a string of pearls is basically considered a succulent. And a lot of people forget that or don't know that when they get the string. So a lot of times the reason behind people fail with their string of pearls is due to overwatering. So when it got overwatered, it did suffer from root rot. I had to take it out from the soil it was in and I transferred it into this pot and I started propagating it in sphagnum moss. And it bounced back pretty well in the sphagnum moss. As you can see, it has already trailed really long. And I didn't take it out of sphagnum moss because the string of pearls roots is very delicate and if you have propagated in sphagnum moss before you'd know that the sphagnum moss tend to stick to the roots and it's very hard to get out so i just decided to keep it in the sphagnum moss medium and it has been doing pretty well it continues to grow but the thing with the sphagnum moss is a grow medium it doesn't have any nutrients in it it is a very sterile medium so so while string of pearls don't really require fertilizing, maybe just once a year during the growing season, I do now fertilize this every month using a fish emulsion just to give it some nutrients since it doesn't get any nutrients from the sphagnum moss. So here I'm fertilizing this string of pearls. At the same time, I'm watering it. I'm using a liquid fertilizer, the fish emulsion, which has a 5-1-1 NPK ratio. And I'm just gonna pour it on the top of the sphagnum moss and let it drain down the tray and I'm gonna let it absorb it a little bit and then I'm gonna take it out and let it try out a little bit before I bring it back. And that's pretty much it. I try not to pour a lot of water in it because it is sphagnum moss, it does hold a lot of moisture. So I don't want to overly saturate the sphagnum moss as well. So I just maybe put about a cup of that water. But if I'm not fertilizing my string of pearls or any of my string of plants, I do bottom water them just to make sure they're just getting enough water that they need and they're not getting overwatered. And there are other string of plants that are also kind of like the string of pearls, like the string of dolphins, the string of bananas. But I'm not really into those type of string of succulent plants. I really just like the string of pearls. So that's why this is the one that I have and it's my favorite. Next one is the string of hearts. This one is also very popular, very sought after plant. And I don't think this one has gone out of trend at all. People still look for this. While it has become more available, especially in the West Coast, it's still as not as available in many places. I know here in Maryland, I've only found this once at a Home Depot and it was sold as a succulent in a four inch pot. I didn't get it then because there wasn't really much on that four inch pot for the price they were charging, although it was just, I think about five or six dollars. And I already had this. So I got mine from Etsy. This was the very first time I bought plants online and I bought it from Etsy. And I was really happy with the seller that I bought it, but I don't think they sold succulents again ever since because I haven't seen them post any Thing under Etsy shop again at least not the string of hearts I think I bought it for about seven dollars and I paid for six dollars shipping at first it had a hard time adjusting like the tips were drying out but eventually it started pushing out new growth and it started to trail really really long and come fall early winter I decided to propagate it and I actually gave some of the propagations away during my very first giveaway but then over the winter, it suffered from mealybugs. And by the time I caught it, it was really, really bad. And mealybugs ordinarily are easy to get rid of. But because the string of hard stems are so delicate and so thin, and I caught it too late, so it's near impossible to get rid of the mealybugs and still save my string of hearts. So I saved the strands that I still can, propagated it in perlite, and now it has bounced back and it's starting to trail again. When you're repotting any of the string of plants in the soil medium, just make sure it's a very, very well-draining soil mix with a lot of perlite. And if you could do 50-50 perlite, maybe even 70% perlite on your soil mix, then and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna fill this up almost all the way to the top. I 
and I'm gonna get my string of hearts. So as you can see, the string of hearts have this large tubers where all the roots are forming and also where the strands are coming from. When potting up the string of hearts, and I learned this from Christian, crazy plant guy, don't bury the tubers all the way in just because it would be easier to tell if the string of hearts need water or not. I'm going to show you also another way that I learned from Nick Pelleggi how to tell if your string of hearts need water if you don't have your tuber showing. But right now I'm going to replant this string of hearts by just putting the tuber on top of the soil and just lightly covering up the roots of the string of hearts. I'm making sure... how it looks and it has a few trails going down already and I just coiled up some of the trails that don't have leaves in them anymore so that it could fill up the top of the pot and even though it's not a succulent it is considered as one at least when it comes to its care when I water this I don't just wait for the soil to be completely dry I also perform the taco test which I learned from Nick Pelaghi you hold one of the mature leaves of the string of hearts and try to fold it like a taco if it's very resistant then your string of hearts don't need watering yet even though if even though the soil is really dry but if it actually folds out very easily then your string of hearts already need water the next favorite string of plants is another string of hearts this is the variegated string of hearts or the serapegia woodia variegata I, I got this as a surprise present from elizabeth who is the winner of my 500 subscribers giveaway so in a way i actually won that giveaway because this is a wish list plant of mine and i was really surprised when i received the plant mail because i wasn't expecting it and i was even more surprised and happy when i saw that she sent me a variegated string of hearts and i've been wanting this plant for so long and if the regular variety of the serapegia woody eye is hard to find this variegated string of hearts is even harder to find so i let some of the strands dangle in so that you could see how it looks like when it's already Trailing. look how beautiful that is against this white pot what I've been doing is looping around the strands on top of the soil just like this and hopefully this would grow roots from the nodes where you could see some of the tubers already forming and I'm just gonna light out on top of the soil like that and it would produce more strands that way so yeah so this is the string of hearts variegata this is currently not just my favorite string of plants but one of my current favorite plants right now and i really really can't believe that i already have this plant in my possession so thank you so much elizabeth i really really appreciate this gift from you and last but not least in my favorite string of plants is the peperomia prostrata or string of turtles this has been my wishlist plant ever since i started my plant journey it's very very difficult to find it but it has popped up in garden centers earlier this year when people were actually finding it at Lowe's and Home Depot but I couldn't find it in my local Lowe's and Home Depot but I really, really wanted it and one of the public gardens in our area actually started selling this online but it got sold out pretty quick and I was really bummed but I went to the local Facebook group that I am that does plant swaps in our area and I asked if there's anyone that has Peperomia prostrata or string of turtles that they're willing to trade for my Monstera stilte picana and somebody said yes and over this this weekend we made that contact class curbside plant swap where I dropped off the plant on this doorstep and this was waiting for me on their doorstep and I was really happy with this string of turtles I really wanted this I think I've mentioned in previous videos that I am in suburban Maryland I'm at and the University of Maryland mascot is the Testudo go Terps so this string of turtles have that sentimentality to me as well and this is a peperomia and I'm not really into peperomias a lot I don't own quite a lot of peperomias I have the Pilea peperomides which is the closest I have to a peperomia I did have the peperomia pixie that I got also from a plant swap and also a peperomia obstifolia which I actually sold off already but this is a peperomia that I really really wanted to get but the thing with peperomia prostrata is it's very delicate and it's also a very slow grower and as you can see over over here you would see some leaves over here but this is actually just fallen leaves these are not actual strands or rooted strands I just put it on top it's not gonna propagate that way this one propagate from a single leaf but I just wanted to put it here as long as it looks nice uh, on top of the soil just to cover up the areas that are empty but the way I propagate this Properomia prostata is also by layering I do use bobby pins like this to make the strands 
stay close to the soil but i don't try to push it down because i don't want to damage the vines as well kind of like the string of hearts they're very sensitive so i try not to push it down a little bit but just enough to anchor the vines down and another way that i am propagating peperoma prestata because when i got this trade there's also some cuttings that are not root and the way i'm propagating this is a similar and the way i'm propagating this is kind of similar to the way i propagated my string of hearts the very first time that i showed how i propagated in the vlog so what i've done is i've cut that long string of hearts into several pieces i've crushed up some sphagnum moss by crushing up the sphagnum moss, it's easier for me to remove it from the roots and transfer it to soil. Grab some more sphagnum moss, wrap it around, and then just pop it in here, just like that. And then for the rest of the smaller ones, I'm just going to lay them on top. And then maybe sprinkle some sphagnum moss in between the leaves just so it would stay down. What I'm going to do is just mist this every day until I see some significant root growth and then start watering it. But even then I'm probably not going to give it more than like a tablespoon or two of water. That's it. So this is kind of like similar to this but this time I'm using a coco coir and perlite mix and I'm also covering it with this so this is like an airtight container just so I could keep up with the humidity so I don't have to keep spraying it just to make sure to maintain the moisture of the soil but doing this method especially with a peperomia and a string of hearts or string of pearls even it's important that you monitor it as well and check it every now and then because too much humidity might also cause the stem to rot and you do need the leaves to be connected to the stem with a node for it to propagate you won't be able to propagate it using a single pearl or a single leaf from the string of hearts or the peperoma prostrata trust me i tried i wish it could work that way but it doesn't they also propagate well in water i just find that it takes quite a while for them to propagate in water i've also tried direct soil propagation with the string of pearls but it it never really worked out for me in fact i lost the cuttings that i tried to propagate direct soil so if i'm not propagating it water i prefer propagating it this way and i prefer doing this method just because i could propagate more from the same vine not just root it from one side i can also root it from every node of the leaf it's just easier to take care of and monitor as i wait for it to propagate and i'm going to keep you updated with this peperomia prostrata or string of turtles to see how successful i am with propagating it in this method because this is also my first time propagating a peperomia prostrata this way with a string of parts and string of pearls i can give you my word that it works but with peperomia prostrata it's also my first time doing it so i'll keep you updated here on my channel or follow me on instagram and tiktok and i'll give you updates there as well so these are my favorite string of plants the string of pearls the string of hearts serapegia woodii and the string of hearts variegated and the peperomia prostrata so i really love these plants they're beautiful trailing they're beautiful even when they're not trailing they are my favorite string of plants and you take care of it like a succulent it needs very high amount of light it could withstand direct bright light so this one is in a hanging planter on my window and these three are on my windowsill once they started trailing like my string of pearls, I'm probably going to put them in a hanging planter by my window as well. Especially for the string of hearts, whether the regular one or the variegated one. If you want to keep the pink variegation, and if you want the regular string of hearts to be pink on the back, then you have to give it a lot of light. And when it comes to watering, they're like succulents. You only water them when the soil is really dry. And with the string of hearts, you could do the taco test. Where the leaves fold, then it's time to water them. Because they store their water, not just in the tubers but also in their leaves same with the string of pearls and the string of turtles they do store water in their leaves and even though the soil is very very dry they still have reserved water and with the string of pearls the way you know that it needs watering aside from the really really dry soil is that the pearls start to look dull some of them would look shriveled and also when you touch them they're sticky with the peperomia prostrata i'm still learning with this plant like i said i just got this but I suspect it's pretty much the same way. You have to wait until the soil is really, really dry and for the leaves to be soft a little bit before I start watering them again. So for a plant this size in this terracotta pot, 
and I'm giving it lots of bright direct light, I'd say I'll be watering this every three weeks on average, just depending on how dry it gets and if the leaf starts to soften. I do have earthworm castings in the soil mix that I have my string of turtles and string of hearts in, so that's enough fertilizers for them, I believe. But if I were to fertilize them, I would use a liquid fertilizer, probably the fish emulsion, and I would probably only do it once a month max, or maybe even honestly, just every three months, or more likely even just during the growing season. And honestly, towards the end of the summer, as we get close to the fall, I would not fertilize any of these at all. Hi everyone, I'm ready to pick the winner of my 1K giveaway. Everyone who entered it is also following me on Instagram and TikTok, have additional entries, and the winner could pick a plant of their choice from houseplantshop.com and I will send it to them as a gift. So let's see who the winner is of my giveaway. And the winner is Kim Jonas. Congratulations, Kim. I will contact you on Instagram. I believe you gave me your Instagram handle and you're also following me there. So watch out for a DM from me and we'll go from there. Thank you so much for entering. And again, thanks to everyone who has subscribed, liked, commented in my videos. Thank you so much for bringing me over to 1K and I hope you all stick around and I have lots more videos for you guys in the future and there'll be giveaways sometime in the late summer, early fall again. So do watch out for that. All right, thank you. But yeah, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you like it. If you like it, please give me a thumbs up. And if you're new here, I hope you subscribe. I come up with house plans and sustainable lifestyle videos every week. And if you haven't yet, go check out these videos out here until my next one. But until then, I see you. I appreciate you. Take care of yourself and each other and have a plentiful day. Bye.